to do is close out today with one observation before I sign off. And that is, I had the opportunity during a, a short cocktail reception after the launch and before dinner in Venice. So this is on the, um, the evening of the 27th. And I was speed, standing next to Bass Smith, who's the VP of local marketing, and Peter Boone, who's the global CEO, and president of the World Cocoa Foundation. And I looked directly up. He's, he's taller than I am. I looked up at Peter and I said, well, you know, now that you are the president of the World Cocoa Foundation and you are the CEO of the largest chocolate company in the world, will you commit to meeting your voluntary commitments under the Harkin Engel protocol? right? Um, during your tenure as president of World Cocoa Foundation. Now, I say you don't need to respond to me right now, and because I knew that he would not respond to me right now. But I think that the point that I want to leave with everyone here, and from, as a lobbying perspective, just in terms of talking about it, and it's a point that I really want to make to everybody who's in senior management at Global, at, at Barry Calabout, whether it's in marketing, whether it's at R&D, whether it's in sales, whether it's anybody who's involved in the board of directors, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting you know, uppity here, right? Is that let us make a fundamental component of second generation chocolate that in this generation, you are going to end all forms of illegal labor and child slavery in your supply chain everywhere in the world. Make that a part of the ethos of G2, not just clean label, not just less sugar, Right, but you know what? We've been saying that we're gonna solve this problem for more than 20 years. It's why the World Cocoa Foundation was set up to meet their obligations under Harkin Engel. And every time they get to this point, it's like they're gonna push it down the road another five years. They're gonna push it down the road another five years. And as a matter of fact, Mondelez said, oh, we're going to invest another $600,000 in our, um, our private cocoa certification program you know, through 2030. So Mondelez has just signaled, yeah, we're not going to meet our obligations under Harkin Engel by the next deadline, which is 2025, right? We're pushing it another five years. So please, everybody at Barry Calabot, everybody who's watching this, everybody who has any interest in this topic, please let, your, let everybody at Barry Calabot know. This is an opportunity to use the interest, the enthusiasm right? Any momentum that you might be able to generate behind second generation chocolate to say, yes, we are finally going to solve the problem that we have been an enabler of for the last 20 years. Although that's not proven in a court of law yet in the United States. And there is a Trafficking Victims Protection Reauthorization Act lawsuit, um, which is... Um, which has been filed and is currently undergoing the early briefing station. I had a chance to talk with Terry Collins' work about this last week, but I think it's really, really important that we make that we make that request of Barry Calabat. So if you have an opportunity to send a letter, to lobby, every time you see, to talk about it in, with customers of yours, this becomes a place, I believe, and this is important, that if you are a craft chocolate maker and you are directly sourcing and you can talk about how you are in fact directly improving the lives and livelihoods of the farming communities from the farmers and farming communities from whom you are buying your beans, that we're addressing this issue, right? If we're buying out of West Africa, if you're not buying out of West Africa, it's, it's less of a compelling point, right? But this is what we can do, right? And can we use our customer base, right? And use this as a point to be able to get big chocolate, and as I say, I think second generation chocolate is a warning shot across the bow of Cargill, largest food company in the world. I mean, you know, Olam, I think it's now Olam Foods International, OFI, OFI, um, Belkolad. I mean, the largest chocolate manufacturers and chocolate cocoa processors in the world, that they can do this. They can do this by investing in facilities, in producing countries to be able to produce higher quality products. But even investing in... Ecuador on a research farm and in a, uh, a uh, manufacturing facility that does not find a way to directly Im improve the lives and livelihoods of the farming community in general, it, rather than, you know, this sort of mythical trickle down, right, that will happen. Uh, uh That's not what it's going to be. This is the problem I have with what's going on between Ghana and Switzerland. Yeah, you can invest in another $500 million in, in, in manufacturing infrastructure in Ghana rather than exporting beans. But that money is going to benefit the people who build the factories, the people who build the equipment that goes into the factories. It might benefit the people who are working in the factories, but not one thing have I seen 
in any of that says, we're going to structure the investments to make sure that some of this money actually has a direct impact on the lives and livelihoods of farmers.